So as before, we already have the header region populated. Uh, the dashboard was injected into the body region. Now we have the addition of that customers tab because we've included the customers module. It was referenced in the uh, bootstrapper and through um, view discovery, um, it, since it was registered with the body region, the customers uh, list view um, is created here and we see it um, showing up. First name and last name is presented uh, for the customers. Now, um, I will show you in just a second here how that when we click on a particular customer name, we're going to use view injection again to be able to stick a customer details view into the customer uh, details region. Let's take a look at that. When the uh, customer list view model, when you click on uh, in the customer list view a, uh, on, on the uh, data grid, uh, there is a command that is associated with that in the customer list view model called the view customer command. And this is a delegate command, which is a, uh, a prism class that is provided for us. We don't need any wire ups in the code behind of the actual customer list view itself. It can merely be data bound uh, to this particular delegate command. And when it's called it refers to a method just down here. It takes the uh, customer list item view model which is an individual uh, line item within the data grid and it's going to pull out of that its customer and it's going to use the event aggregator to publish a show customer event containing the customer. It's the controller that receives that event if you recall we wired up the show customer event. We subscribe to it to this method called show customer. And this is going to use view injection to get a reference to the customer region. It is going to get a reference to the customer view model, which has a lot more detail about the customer. Initialize it, get a reference to the customer view, remove any other customer views or any other kind of view that might be in the customer region. And then it's going to go ahead and add a customer view and associate its data context to be the customer um, view model. And the customer view, um, we saw that once before, contains all the, all the detail for the customer. Its associated view model um, has parameters um, for properties for the first name, the last name, the address, basically everything that's going to uh, be data bound. So when it is created, once again, it uses dependency injection to get a reference to the container and the event aggregator and the model service are going to be important uh, to it. I think we could leave the model service out. I think since we're passing the customer, this one uh, isn't necessary. That's probably just an ex extra little item that was uh, passed along. We're going to set the customer and then um, for every property, if the customer exists, it's going to use uh, the appropriate property. We'll be able to see the data up here. And there's a button, if you recall, on the um, customer view for showing outstanding orders. And what we're actually going to um, do with that is send a message. Since our command implements this method, view outstanding orders, it's going to use the event aggregator to publish a show application message event. And this is one of our global messages defined in our infrastructure show application message event and it's just going to send a message there are no outstanding orders for this customer. That message 
if you recall a while back in our presentation here, is actually subscribed to by the dashboard controller. So this is a controller in a separate module that's listening for that event. This is how that event aggregator can communicate even across modules. So in here, in the show application uh, message event subscription, this is where that show application message um, view injection can occur and it will show our message in the um, modal dialog. So let's run the app and, and show that again for you. So show with our regions and our two views that were inserted via view, uh, three actually, through view discovery. Our current customers, when I click on it through uh, view injection, it's going to inject uh, the customer details view uh, in here. And when I push this button for show outstanding orders, it's going to inject a view into the modal dialog region. And there's our message, there are no more, or there are no outstanding orders for this customers. So we've been able to see in this demonstration that we can take thing, or uh, controls like the content controls and tab controls, and use them as regions within a prism shell. We can use view discovery to register uh, views with regions, such as the dashboard view or the customer list view. We can use view injection to be able to inject um, views like the customer details view into the customer region. And we can use view injection to inject views uh, into um, uh, other regions like the modal dialog region and communicate with those regions across modules using the event aggregator. So having seen um, PRISM and seen a demo on it, what types of applications can benefit from using PRISM? Well, apps where the UI needs to uh, develop or release features incrementally. Um, if you divide up the functionality of your application into features that can be added as tabs uh, to your interface, you can see how adding tabs um, can be closely associated with modules and including or excluding um, modules would add or remove tabs from your UI. Those uh, each individual modules could be developed by different teams, uh, it could be developed at different times, uh, so it allows a lot of flexibility uh, in developing your code. You can also benefit from isolating legacy code as modules or as services uh, within your PRISM application and that uh, allows for a lot of good separation. Other frameworks to consider besides PRISM um, are MVVM Lite and Calibre and Micro. They seem to be the most popular. Both, however, um, are focused more on MVVM than they are on uh, regions and views um, and modules. So they don't really contain any module frameworks, um, but of course that's the thing that attracts most people to these, provides the benefit. If you really need region and module support um, for either MVVM Lite or Caliper and Micro, you can look at uh, something as simple as um, WPF and a combination of MEF or Unity to provide that. You can essentially roll your own. Um, it's not too difficult. There are some examples online that uh, show you how to do that. Um, so, but if you if you are concerned only about uh, the MVVM aspect of this type of development, you should consider uh, MVVM Lite and Calibre and Micro alongside uh, Prism if you want something that is a little bit lighter. What about Windows 8? Well, with Windows uh, 8 desktop, um, I have taken the demo app, run it on Windows 8. It runs fine. Um, there are certain um, things you should consider um, when running on Windows 8. And uh, if you look in the references section, I have reference to an excellent um, set of articles that are available on the MSDN Magazine's special Windows 8 uh, edition that will help you make some decisions on um, how to prepare for Windows 8. 
the suggestions um, are primarily code using .NET 4.5 uh, and also consider using portable class library projects uh, which again I've got a reference in or a link in the reference section if you're unfamiliar with those. Above all get a copy of Windows 8 and test it to be sure but uh, if you're using .NET 4.5 at least uh, which it did for this um, demo project uh, you should have a good expectation of being able to run your project in Windows 8 um, desktop and seeing it actually run. Now what about Windows or WinRT which is uh, Windows 8 but is designed for uh, mobile for uh, ARM processor. Well there is no prism for WinRT. Uh, matter of fact there is no prism specifically for Windows 8. Uh, the project that was supposed to uh, build uh, prism for Windows 8 has not seen any activity as far as I can tell on the patterns and practices website so for now um, moving forward at least you should not assume that that's going to exist until they announce uh, that they're going to do anything about that. Um, considering WinRT in the mobile framework though since um, those apps are normally a lot lighter than a full-blown line of business application uh, you should probably consider using a lighter framework like MVVM Lite for instance um, instead of something that uh, involves dividing up your functionality into modules and region managers and so forth. Um, you should also consider if you're going to try and develop for WinRT uh, developing your or uh, if you're going to port an application to WinRT you try to do that you should consider developing your XAML um, is specifically for WinRT. Some of the explanations, especially in the Windows 8 article by Pete Brown, um, seem to indicate that it's quite painful to try and make uh, your XAML uh, capable of working both for WinRT and uh, just plain Windows 8.NET framework. So there are, like I said, a number of resources in our presentation today that will uh, help guide you uh, through a lot of these concepts and through some of the uh, features that um, we've mentioned um, and other features that uh, will help you at least future proof yourself uh, for Windows 8 and what should uh, be coming down the road for that. Um, if you are interested in any uh, Intertech training revolving around um, MVVM, we have some training courses coming in July. And of course, if you have any questions about this presentation uh, or anything else regarding PRISM, uh, go ahead and send me an email at tegan at intertech.com. So today, we reviewed the main concepts of PRISM, set it up for a project, took a closer look at the bootstrapping process, identified the types of applications that would benefit from it, briefly discussed other similar frameworks, and reviewed what is known about PRISM and Windows 8. I hope uh, you're able to learn something good today, and uh, thank you for attending. We have Intertech has um, all kinds of other content, whether free oxygen blasts, podcasts on iTunes, uh, white pa papers, and other uh, things that may be of interest to you. So go ahead and contact us regarding um, any of your training needs. And thank you for attending today. Mm -hmm.